Hey folks and welcome to this video. In this video we are going to have a look at the Algo Trader that is almost ready to be released. I've been working on this for a really long time and there are a lot of things that were kind of getting in the way from my being able to finish it in a timely fashion and so now I've decided to uh, get it ready and push it out. So I'm just going to go through quickly uh, the settings of, of the robot just so you can see uh, what it's doing and then we're going to have a look at some of the trades that it's currently got in the market just so you can also kind of gain an understanding about what it's doing and why it's putting orders in at these these given levels. Um, before we start um, I just want to say that I mean the robot is essentially based on the same functionality as a Pipnotic supply and the indicator as you can see running here. So essentially what it's doing it's identifying these these areas of uh, high prob these high probability turning points in the market and it's placing uh, orders around these. And if we look historically how these have fared you can see that they're pretty decent areas and we have this one up here which is fresh and untested. We have this one we have this one which saw a test on the release but this is a gorgeous area we have this one here which held one two three tests and we have a couple below price as well and we've got this one which is tested on the release you can see the pin bar that moved into it we have this one which is still untested almost tested here we have this one which is tested have this one which is untested and so you can see that I mean these areas are pretty powerful um, and this applies on on most of the time frames um, and so it's um it's a really exciting project and when you get your risk reward parameters correct uh, you don't have to be right a hundred percent of the time and neither will you be if you're trading uh, kind of responsibly and constantly monitoring and reducing your risk so the robot is essentially I mean the core of the robot is based on the supply and demand software that is actually really really old but has been constantly uh, maintained. Um, I started writing it back in around 2010 and it has um, been a part of many different um, software packages at Pipnotic almost yeah, for eight, eight years or so. So it's a, it's a really old and uh, solid piece of code. Um, the indicator is simply requesting uh, levels, sending requests to the core, and the core is uh, sending these return, and then it's putting orders in the market based on this information. Uh, the robot is also trading in line with interest rate swaps, if this is what you want. Um, otherwise, you can simply disable this feature. All right, let me have a quick look at the, at the settings. You can see that we have some information here about slippage and spreads and things like that, and we have the time frame. The time frame simply tells the robot which uh, time frame to trade on because you can you can set it to trade on any of these time frames. You can set it to trade monthly, weekly, daily, and all the way down to one minute areas of supply and demand. But I like to slow things down a little bit so that I can uh, deal with uh, this trading stuff um, with a with very low stress. And uh, so I put it on the daily, generally the the four hour and above but I like the daily it's just a really nice time frame that suits my personality quite nicely uh, we have a setting here which is the active chart only and when this is set to true it's only analyzing the currency pair that the indicator or the the robot is attached to if it is not this is set to false it goes down here and it reads this setting and it says okay which pairs am I allowed to trade and I've put a ton here all of them actually all 28 of them in here but you can restrict this to for example the euro dollar the dollar yen and the Aussie American dollar if these are the pairs that you choose to trade and that's completely fine and I really recommend that you do this and so this is essentially the difference between uh, active chart only and um, scanning all pairs so we have the, the maximum risk so it's going to look at uh, this parameter here and it's going to calculate the risk based on the capital available. Um, if this is set to zero then it's going to look to the static lot size parameter which is a micro lot. And I put these on the smallest possible uh, values just to make sure that if someone accidentally enables it that it's not going to do anything that's going to devastate anyone. Uh, maps, max positions per pair It'll, it's allowed to trade one, put one order in per currency pair, uh, max positions per currency. So it'll trade, 
You can trade any of six different currency pairs that are exposed to, for example, the American dollar or the euro. And so it can have six positions open that contain um, the euro or the Japanese yen, but no more. And it's constantly monitoring this um, just to make sure that you don't have an overexposure to um, any one currency, because this can also be um, quite dangerous. Um, distance between positions. If this value here is set to five, then the robot is going to cascade orders at areas of supply or demand. And so if this was set to um, if this was set to five, so if this was set to five, for example, and this is set to one, then it's going to put the first one in here, then it's going to go one pip above, put the next one, one pip above, and the next one, and it'll do this five times. You'll have five positions at this area of uh, supply. So it enables you to ensure that you're getting uh, a better average price per per trade if you utilize these settings. Then we have delete pending delete all pending and when this is set to false it's not deleting orders if it's set to true it's, it deletes all pending orders and this is really nice if you just want to kind of clean up uh, all pending orders and start afresh um, because it's a pain to have to delete them one by one we have filters we have enable the trend you can uh, you can define trend information if you like I don't because the trend can be um, slightly tricky when trading supply and demand, but some people like to trade in line, for example, with the weekly trend, and then they'll be trading one hour or four hour or daily supply and demand, uh, which will be in sync with the with the weekly trend or the monthly trend. So that's also fine. We have positive swap only. So if you set this to true, then it's going to be trading positions where, rather it's going to be trading in line with the interest rate uh, differentials, which will have to be um, equal to or greater than minus one. So essentially it'll be earning interest every day at rollover if your broker um, gives you this. Stops, um, enable stops, uh, yes please. Stop multiplier uh, two. And this is, what it's doing is looking at the, uh, the size of supply or demand. And it's taking that size and it's multiplying it by two. So if you have an area of supply that is 10 pips, it's going to multiply 10 by 2 by this value here and the size of the stop will be um, will be 20 pips instead and so there's a little bit of a buffer above an area of supply and below an area of demand and the, the end result so 20 pips um, will be used when calculating the position sizes um, relative to the amount of risk that you allow per trade okay stop stop in pips um, if you want to define a static stop, you can do so here. Um, enable targets, yes please, target multiplier. So it's looking at four times the size of uh, of the area of supply and demand. So in, this, in the example we used previously, the stop would be 20 pips and the target would be 40 pips. If you want to use a static value, you can simply define that here. Um, supply and demand uh, configuration. Here we have the risk to reward ratio, the price and balance period. This is the stuff that's relative um, to how areas of supply and demand are formed. And if you're using the supply and demand uh, discretionary tools, then this stuff will be um, will be very clear to you. Um, we have enable deep zones, and this is interesting in the situation that you want to start selling once price begins to move through an area of supply. So example, if we look at this one here, let me go like this, good, we look at this one here, you can see the price has fed into that here, here, and so I mean this area is getting eaten away, and so what this setting will do, um, enable deep zones, which is currently set to false, it will, if it's set to true, it'll start, it'll place the order at the upper edge of this area of supply, so at the beginning of a sell zone, will be above supply, the beginning of the buy zone will be below demand. So for this one here, it'll start selling below the area of demand. And this is interesting um, in the situation that there is a parent-child relationship. It will essentially put orders, cascade orders, um, above the child, essentially placing it within the context of the parent supply or demand. Cool, then we have uh, trading sessions. We have, um, for example, if you do not want to trade, 
um, a specific time of the day, you put these values here, and these are relative to your server time on your, on your trading platform. Uh, the Asian session, we want to trade the Asian session. Um, relative to my server time, this is what those times are. A European session, North American session, and here we have information regarding the days that you want to trade. You want to trade Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, or Fridays, yes or no. Then we have the pairs that I mentioned and went over previously, and then we have the magic number. And that's pretty much it. This is the uh, the configuration. So we close this and we have a look at some of the order that's got on. Let's go up here and look. So we have So we have this one here. Let's just drag this on there. So we have this one here. So software said, yes, this looks like a nice area. Why is it a nice area? Well, we had a pretty nice release. Price came back, then it left, and we have not been back to the area since then. It's only trading fresh areas of supply and demand. And this is essentially um, a fresh area. And when price left this area here, we managed to move below this demand which consume this supply here so this is a nice valid area there um, we have a look at the dolly yen Let me zoom out a little Let's see where we are so we have this is the buy it's buying down here so this is kind of, this is a nested area um, and it's looking in this area here price came down we accumulated we left quickly we came back to the beginning and then we left so this is a, a daily area nested within this uh, weekly area so the size of it was about from um, the buy entry here to the bottom edge of this weekly box we multiply that by two which we saw in the settings and this is where the stops gonna go look at the pound dollar we have this one here I've been waiting for, for for quite a long time but price has not gotten there so we have this one here really nice area and this kind of when price left here I mean it, it hasn't been back all this black space since the release price has only managed to come back to kind of here just here you see on this little pullback and then release it's the beginning of the accumulation to move price lower and so this is just a really nice fresh area of supply so I look forward to price coming back there and I think on this position here we could easily uh, follow price um, lower to some fresh demand and so we don't have any fresh demand until until we get down around here you can see the price has already been down to this level so price could easily uh, move below this down to this area here and essentially down to this little nice area of demand here okay let's have a look at the we won't go through all of these just grab a couple of examples we have this one here so price went up came down left we came back, accumulated, pulled back, and then we dumped. Sorry, we, we, we shot away and moved higher. This is just a really nice, uh, the anatomy of this area of demand is very clear because when price left here, we managed to move above all of these, uh, all of these highs here. Um, so this is like a, looking like a decent area. What I do like is this one down here better. Um, and so in some situations, I mean, the robot isn't perfect. I will use my analysis and I'll say, I mean, this looks like a nice area, and we could leave this in there, but this looks like a nice area as well. So <clears throat> it would also be valid to do something like that, move it down here. But we'll leave it there because we don't want to fiddle too much with um with the trades. Um, and it's got that one there. If we have a look at the let's try this one, euro pound. Um, we have this one here, which is just a really nice release, just a really nice fresh area. So the area looks like this like that the stop is two times the size um, this looks like a really nice area price left and we have not been back we've only been back we mark off the highs we've been back to here this is the highest retracement so the beginning of the sell sign st starts at the high of here and it continues up and above so this is just place at this really nice area of supply above price there good right well I I think I'll leave it at that um, this with this uh, algo trader there will be a dedicated uh, chat room and we'll be in there um, and we'll have an account there we're trading and uh, we'll show the results and we can kind of trade together um, pricing hasn't been decided yet. I don't really know how to how to do this and I'm also kind of figuring out what to do how to structure that um, but of course I'll, I'll get to that um, before we um, before we make this public but um this is kind of where we're at the moment it's very exciting and I look forward to it and uh, if you have any questions um, please feel free 
to uh, to jump into the um, to the room and uh, and ask questions. And uh, until then, have a have a super day, and I'll see you or speak with you in the near future. Thank you.